What is the address of your emergency? It's Please come now. My daughter's unconscious. It's the sound of sheer panic. How old is she? 16. Sophia! Sophia! She's on her back. Please hurry. Got them on the way. It was a quiet afternoon near Boulder, Colorado, when Ryan Kristoff finds his then 16-year-old daughter, Sophia, barely breathing. I'm pushing on her chest, and it's making some noise, but she's unconscious. Okay, and is she laying flat on her, her back? Blue blue. She's on her back on her bed. Listen carefully, and I'm going to tell you how to do chest compression. Within minutes, Sergeant David Cohen with the Lafayette, Colorado Police Department pulls up. I'm in the count with you, okay? So try and go with the pace I'm counting, okay? Keep up with that pace if you can, okay? I'm going to respond in with an AED. Hold on, I think it might be, hold on. Up here, up here! Upstairs? Yes. Cohen sprinting up the stairs and into Sophia's bedroom. What is her name? Sophia. Let me take over CPR. <laughs> Sir, does she use narcotics? Sophia's father telling him he doesn't think so. He only knows of her smoking a little weed. But Officer Cohen's experience told him otherwise. I'm going to get 21 slight pulse and Narcan administered. As the approaching ambulance gets closer, the Narcan kicks in. She breathing? She's breathing, yes, sir. Sophia had taken a Percocet that came from a drug dealer, not knowing it was laced with fentanyl a synthetic opioid used to treat severe pain that is 50 times more powerful than heroin. I'm bored in my room and I notice, you know, I have half this pill. Why not? Like, it'll make me cheer up. And I crushed it up, took a line, felt kind of sparkly for two seconds, and then I woke up in the hospital. Where do you think you would be now had you not? overdosed. I think I could have been in a worse spiral or as far as I know I could have been dead I could have been struggling but I think that I'm grateful for it. From coast to coast in every corner of the U.S. deaths from fentanyl overdoses are soaring. More than a hundred thousand people died from drug overdoses in a 12-month period ending in October of 2021. Recent CDC data revealing two thirds of those deaths are linked to fentanyl and those deaths doubling over the past two years. There's no question in my mind that the vast majority of chemicals are coming from China and going to Mexico and being mass produced into fentanyl, into methamphetamine and increasingly into the counterfeit pills that we see on our streets. And fentanyl is sometimes mixed in other illicit drugs, heroin, meth and cocaine. It's a cheap, high or high, but also can be a lethal combination. A tense scene in Wilton Manors. Multiple spring breakers overdosing, rushed to the hospital. The culprit, first responders say, drugs laced with fentanyl. When I found out that he was doing fentanyl, every day I didn't know, you know, if I was going to get that call. He was living life loving it's just, it's heavy, it's heavy right now. Users often have no idea. She supposedly had taken a Percocet, and that Percocet later, you know, was laced with fentanyl, and that took, that took her life. This is an epidemic that's been hidden by the pandemic, and we need more attention paid to this issue. After everything Sophia Kristoff and her dad have been through, playing softball together is familiar and comfortable. <laughs> that was awesome. A reminder of a simpler time. Now in her junior year, Sophia looks forward to taking the field with her team next season. She loves going to games and she loves playing. I do too, and it's, it's really grateful that we've been able to have that to bond over and spend time together. But through her sophomore year, Sophia was hiding a secret from her father. What did your dad know about what was going on? He knew I was smoking weed sometimes. So he had no idea. And I think that's part of that is because it all happened so fast. In the span of just one year, she started experimenting with a long list of drugs. She was suspended from school and her grades fell. Cocaine, Xanax, ketamine ones, acid, shrooms, Adderall. So just pills. In the pill. Yeah, just like every, hand, everything I like could that. get my hands on. I felt stupid um, that I should have known, especially with my own history. And it's not like I think, oh, she's terrible because she did those things, or, or my girl would never do that. Um, 
I just didn't think she was doing that. And these are all plugs that I bought from before. Sophia says buying drugs is as easy as sending the right emoji to a so-called plug, a dealer who finds customers on apps like Snapchat. I'm looking for a little plug emoji or like a fire emoji or just whatever emoji the normal dealers I have. They're like, yo, hit my line for gas. And then you're like, yo, you got, you got whatever, like slang terms for whatever. And it can happen that fast just yeah. by communicating on Snapchat mm -hmm. and by searching with the right emoji. If you know where to go, it's really easy. It's a terrifying new playbook for drug dealing. Now so common, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency releasing this cheat sheet for parents and guardians showing the emojis commonly used to buy drugs on social media. I cannot emphasize enough how deadly this drug is to human life, especially to unsuspecting youth in our community. Uh, these, p these pills are widely available and are often sold for dollars a piece on social media. And pictures showcasing how counterfeit pills they've seized from drug dealers look eerily similar to the real medications doctors prescribe. Just days ago, Snapchat issuing a statement detailing their efforts to flush out drug-related content and announcing steps to curb illegal activity, saying they have zero tolerance for the promoting of illegal drugs on their platform. 20 miles south of Lafayette, Denver, Colorado Police Chief Paul Pazin feels like he's at war. I get uh, daily reports of suspected individuals who have passed away as a result of fentanyl overdoses. Every day you're hearing of deaths? That's somebody's family that has just been devastated by fentanyl by uh, this uh, very deadly drug. We have a situation where a father lost two sons on the exact same day from a fentanyl overdose. The ripple effect, yeah, cannot be denied of what happens, especially when we have kids dying at school, passing out in the bathrooms. What are you seeing as the biggest problem when it comes to the actual ingestion of fentanyl. Folks think that this might be something else that they're ingesting. So bringing awareness to this issue that uh, that pill may not be Percocet, uh, that pill uh, may not be Xanax, that that pill may contain fentanyl and potentially could be deadly is critical. It's so cheap, it's so easy to move, it's so addictive for the end user. We are going to need everybody coming together uh, as a country, as a state, uh, federal, state, local law enforcement. Colorado's House of Representatives introducing a bill last month to enact stiffer criminal penalties on those involved with the sale and distribution of fentanyl. Is there an end in sight? I'm not seeing that end. I'm seeing this issue getting worse. I'm seeing more and more people dying as a result of this issue. We uh, need to do something about this immediately. Officers, like Sergeant David Cohen, are on the front lines day after day. And this time, he saved Sophia from becoming yet another statistic. When did it become clear to you that it was an overdose? Um, I mean, I don't know if it ever became clear to me until I administered Narcan and it worked between training and experience and being able to look around the room and seeing uh, miscellaneous drug paraphernalia that goes a little bit above and beyond normal uh, marijuana and alcohol use. And so because of that, you knew to administer the Narcan? Yes, ma'am. If it's not needed and you use it, it's going to do no harm. Right. Um, if it's needed and you use it, it's only going to do good. These kids are dying for one bad decision, um, and it almost happened to her. It's a hard time to be a parent of a teenager and even harder to be a teenager. With thousands of lives cut short by tainted drugs, Sophia is one of the lucky ones, but she still bears the weight of her brush with death. That's been a very big part. Like the guilt that comes with the, f like I, I see firsthand the effects it had on everybody. Being here thinking like, damn, all these kids are out here overdosing and never coming back. And I'm the one that came back. Like, why me? So I'm just trying to have the mindset that I'm here and I was a lucky one and I got to make it worth it. This is what's in the box. There's two of these. Her father, Ryan, now on a mission to educate teens and parents the on the dangers of dabbling in drug use. If someone were to watch this video, 
What do you want them to know? And what do you want them to take away from it? First of all, I want them to know more about Sophia than just this video. And that's a moment in her life, but that's not who she is. I would want people to see that it can happen to even someone like Sophia, even their daughter, even their son, even people you think is the least likely to happen to. It can happen. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.